and it's headphones nail. Headphones Neil here, back with another episode of Headphones Neil Reviews. Um, so I got enough of an episode as usual for this week with some TV show reviews, some gameplay updates, and one that's more of a general just update because I had an issue saving the gameplay, so I'll get to that when I get to that, but that's more towards the end of the episode. Partly because it's Star Wars related, but partly because it's no actual updates and more of just future planning, so that's for later in the episode. So to start it off, I'm this week I wanted to start with my gameplay for Roller Coaster Tycoon. So I started the Emerald Group set of maps, uh, notably the first one, Bumbly Beach, which is kind of a, it's basically a beachside um, park. It's kind of like a Santa Monica Pier style area where you have a small um, area to um, build your park. You have to get you know get enough people in the park, maintain your park rating, and that sort of stuff. So, because it's the beginning of the um, set of maps, is um, pretty much on the easier side. Um, you do have a small area to work with, so you do have to make sure you um, plan accordingly. So, one of the first things I did was um set up some uh restaurants and small easy rides so like the haunted house ferris and check up on the ferris wheel um set up the um or just review the queues and things like that so you know get take care of the easy stuff so you can so i can build up some queues and lines and things like that so once people start coming into the park and they get into the go-kart queue and that takes a while then at least i can maintain um that and then I went into building bigger rides, so um, a train and uh, the log ride and um, a couple of other things. A couple of them I can maintain, just use a pre-built um, uh, or pre-built te pre-built template for a ride. So um, once you do things like that, it's pr the map is pretty straightforward. It's easy to get through, um, getting enough people in the park. Um, and maintain the rating. So from there, it's just a matter of making sure you have enough trash cans, a cleaning crew, and things like that, just to make sure that um, uh, your park is clean and the rating stays up. So I don't really have much to say aside from you have a pretty small space. So I, that's why I kind of recommend starting with the shops and then the log ride and the go kart and stuff like that. You already have one big roller coaster in the form of a wooden roller coaster. So. One of the things I recommend for that is expanding the queue and adjusting the number of cars. So if you make the queue a little bit longer and change it from the default cars to either one or to, from two cars to one and expand the length of the car or shorten the um, number of cars in the two car or number of individual cars in the two um, cars, then um that way you can keep the queue that for that one long as well so that way you're keeping more people in the park and then for like the train if you have a cost to the train then fewer people seem to ride it so if you lower the cost of that to like you know 10 or 20 cents or even free you can have an easy way of having a queue set up there so um one of those things where it's a pretty easy park like i said so you just have to make sure you See how people are doing and how they're interacting with your rides. You don't want too much, too many scary rides, but you want them thrilling enough. So, um, set up the rides accordingly. Um, so with that, I did actually end up rewatching John Wick Four. I know last week I wasn't thinking about it, but I had some time and I decided to give it a watch just to see how um, it holds up. And overall, still a good film, a good finale to the series. Uh, one of the things. Um, that um, I found interesting about the ending was even though we're led to believe that John Wick has died because you know he has all those uh, wounds from the final duel they, we show the gravestone um, in that conversation between Winston and the Bowery King uh, Lawrence Fishburne's character um, they ask to talk about if he's in heaven or hell and they're not quite sure where he is or something like that is what Winston replies. 
Um, so part of me actually let, interpreted that this time in that John may actually not, or he could potentially not be dead, and he's actually alive and well, but now he's under the radar. Now that you know the high table and everyone thinks he's dead, he actually moves, you know, moves back home, whether it's home to Germany or wherever, to the Rusca Roma, or you know, living in anonymity in some random small town. He could potentially still be alive, but living under the radar. Um, with the way he got out before, everybody knew he was still alive. So it kind of begged the question that, you know, if he, or tempted fate, that if he's still alive, his mark would still be called in, people could still mess with him and things like that. So by faking his death, he can now live in anonymity. So we could still, we could technically or theoretically have a John Wick 5 if the, um, well, I think at the time of the movie, they were talking about a sequel with um, the Japanese guy's daughter avenging her father's death or something. So we could potentially have a film that moves from John Wick to her and she goes out looking for him or um, still have a John, John Wick film with um, um, Keanu Reeves or something like that but to me I kind of interpreted now this time that he could potentially be alive and living in anonymity the gravestone funeral or just a uh, placeholder to make everybody think that he was dead um, otherwise I also had a chance to watch House of the Dragon uh, season 2 episode 1 a son for a son overall a very good start to the season a good episode um, I did like the opening sequence with the Stark guy and the Targaryen sun guy talking about their odes and the reason for the wall and all of that stuff. Um, overall for me that was a highlight to the character or the highlight to the episode as far as overall visuals and stuff. As far as individual characters, uh, Damon still steals the show or still stole the episode uh, mostly with his conversation with I think it's Rhaenyra is her name and I always forget confuse her name and Rhaenyris I think. But whoever that princess lady is um, who had the line of would that you were king or something like that when Damon orders her to go south with him or something or whatever. But um, she had the best line and then Eamon also had a good um, bit in the episode. Not too much of consequence but he was there to support his brother so I liked um, all of that but... Like I said, overall a very good episode, so I can't wait for more to see what happens in the rest of the season. All of the Heist Tower stuff is still okay, that's more on the politics side. And for me it's more about what's going to happen to their family ultimately. Um, to kind of explain why we don't see them in um, Game of Thrones, or at least in A Song of Ice and Fire. So, um, can't wait to see more there. As far as Star Wars go, I had a chance to watch The Acolyte Season 1, Episode 4. So, a little bit more, this was more on the side of follow-up with the last episode where we're back at the temple um, and the good, the light side sister is found peace knowing that her sister is alive. Um, the Jedi student girl um, telling her that at least the dark side twin is was at peace when she saw her sister, so they're still good in her um, and all of that. But now that we're on the quest to find the Wookiee Jedi to save him from the dark side twin, we'll see how all of that plays out. And we end on a cliffhanger with the mysterious um, red lightsaber assassin. Don't we don't know, or I'm gonna assume because I don't know that he. I don't think he's a Sith. Um, so we'll see exactly kind of how that. Um, plays out if you know if he's the apprentice and may is his apprentice um is he the actual sith master and all of that and does it go into the theory or my theory of are we gonna see plagueis in the, by the end of the series or maybe even tenebris is that that lightsaber user tenebris to begin with um because mostly I don't think that the guy that we saw though in the episode is Plagueis because he seems too short. I think Plagueis was a moon or something like that and then um, Tenebris was a bit so I'm thinking that Te um, Tenebris is staying in the shadows because he is the or the or Ten Tenebris or Plagueis are staying in the shadows because there's the Sith Masters and then that guy that person who's in the armor is the apprentice um going out and that the lightsaber user is going out into the universe to fulfill his or her master's wish or wish so 
My theory now is that possibly the Jedi kill that lightsaber user, and that prompts Tenebris to recruit Plagueis as his apprentice, or is Plagueis he loses that lightsaber user or that lightsaber per the apprent the the Sith apprentice um, either dies or you know fulfills the their master's purpose of getting the twins is you know blood or uh, capturing them or whatever to start the cloning process for Plagueis because the twins were born in the force and that prompts the whole thing of trying to live or like cheat death um, manipulate the metachlorians and learning all about all that stuff so I I'm not sure it depends on where they want to go or like how they want to tie that all together but my theory and suspicion now is that that's kind of what they're going to do. They don't necessarily have to reveal um, Plagueis or Tenebris or all that, any of that. Or, and even if they do in the final episode, I think the bigger um, goal is going to be to set that timeline up where they either set all that up or they, they show Plagueis and Tenebris starting their research into manipulating midichlorians and do kind of like an epilogue where um Plagueis recruits um Palpatine and even as a more far out theory which I don't think is going to happen but I would kind of hope to happen is in the penultimate episode we have the twins captured by the Sith apprentice they uh, they get taken back to um Plagueis and he's able to start his research and start extending his life and all of that we see all the experimentation going on and then in the final episode, in the season finale, we fast forward to um, whenever Palpatine gets recruited by Plagueis. I forget exactly how many years before the Battle of Yavin, but we see um, Palpatine as a young senator on Naboo. Um, and we get an episode where um, Plagueis recruits him, follow the novelization a little bit, where um, Plagueis starts talking to him and said, you know, says you have you're strong in the force. Here's what the Jedi are up to, why they're evil and bad, and recruits him and all that, and deal with that. I mean, and even technically they could take it further and show all of Palpatine's conversion, but I think as far as the acolyte goes, I don't know that they're gonna go that far, especially since we have, where you know, we had all of you know, for example, Obi Wan only focusing on Obi Wan and Leia, not very much going on with Luke with Andor same thing it's kind of we had enough of that the start to the rebellion and we can potentially have an Andor season two that does even more but um it's one of those things where I don't think they'll go that or I'm not I'm holding out hope that they're gonna go that far they're going to stop as far as potentially just showing Plagueis taking on the twins to start his research or just one of the twins depending on if you know, following what I've seen online or what I'm, some theories I've been, I've been reading online. But I think as far as a good pacing for what they show for me personally would be to show Plagueis starting his research with the twins and um, manipulating the midichlorians and then the final episode heading to Nubu to um, recruit Palpatine and do that, you know, fast forward, you know, 50 years or um, cause I think, cause by the time of Phantom Menace, Palpatine was up there. I want to say it was, you know, late forties or maybe in the, even into his fifties. So, um, and depending on how many years before the Battle of Yavin that was, so they could take, cause I think this all takes place like a hundred years. I think it's at a hundred years before the Battle of Yavin. So they could say, you know, 80 years before the Battle of Yavin, go, you know, Plagueis recruits the twins and loses an apprentice and goes off to Naboo to um to recruit Palpatine or even maybe up to like 50 years or 25 years before the Battle of Yavin because Palpatine is still alive but even though it's more of the episode or more of the, the events of A New Hope so I think the timing could generally work in this regard it just depends on where they end up with Tenebris and Plagueis and if they show them at all. Now, as far as the end, uh, as far as the last bit of update for this particular um, episode, I was gonna resume my playthrough of Knights of the Old Republic, but the gameplay I did for heading to Andron and starting the first part of the Ducks and Jungle didn't save, and so I haven't had a chance to re. I do have a save state, 
so I can replay that portion, but I just haven't had a chance to replay it, so that's why you haven't seen very much updates this week. But that's kind of where I'm at, where I'm heading to Andron, we're trying to land there. But we get sidetracked to the Ducks and Jungle, so we're gonna meet up with the Mandalorians first, get, uh, make, um, find a way to make passage off to Andron so he can deal with all that stuff. Um, at some point, we'll be able to, or once Mandalore is in the party, we can head back to Dantuin and Narshada to recruit those Mandalorians to our cause. That's more of a side quest than anything else, but that can be done. But um, anyways, next up on the playthrough, Four Knights of the Old Republic is going to be the Duxen and Andoran story arc. So not much update there aside from that's what's next and that's why you haven't seen much gameplays because the save game that I had failed. So um, look out for that coming soon. But um, as far as this episode goes, that's all there is for this week. So um, as far as reviews for next week, look out for continuing reviews for House of the Dragon and the Acolyte, um, and then I'll have uh, more play gameplays for KOTOR and Roller Coaster Tycoon, so if I have a chance to watch anything else, I'll review that. Um, but other than that, that's all for this particular episode, so if you have any questions, comments, feedback, or anything like that, you can comment on the social media post. Um, all of them are linked on the website at headphonesneal.reviews. Um, you can support the show on Patreon, patreon.com slash pateln01 for early access to the show, a link to the YouTube version and all of that good stuff, along with an ad-free version of the episode. Um, and you can check out the YouTube channel at youtube.com slash pateln01 for the gameplay videos and all of that good stuff. But thanks for tuning into this particular episode and being a supporter of the show, and until then...